Hey guys, we're coming to an interesting video in Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Ash Supplementary Guide. Now we've already covered, of course, the Crit Ash. So this is kind of the on-hit variant of Ash. And right at the beginning, I'm gonna be upfront with you guys. I'm not really sure which is better. Now I've tested both of these builds, of course. I've made videos on both of them. Of course, today we'll be covering the on-hit one. And honestly, I feel that both builds have their own strengths and weaknesses. Like I feel the Crit build, for example, takes a little bit of time to like scale up, whereas this one kind of scales up a little bit faster. Of course, you do still need to stack your mana immune and still need to pick up your Triforce, but I do think that you are you do get a little bit stronger a little bit earlier on compared to that build. And honestly, I think both of them are good and bad for their own like you know reasons. So I think both of them are are pretty good actually. But anyways, let's uh, jump straight into talking about the loadout itself. So as you guys can see here, we first are gonna start off with. The mana immune. So mana immune obviously is going to give you the AD, the mana, and build the haste. As well as, of course, when it involves into mirror mana, it's going to increase the damage of your basic attacks as well as your abilities. And this works very, very well for Ash. Of course, um, you do want to spam your W a lot. And you, of course, your main source of damage comes from your uh, auto attack damage in addition to your W, of course. So this is, you know, basically what you love. Now, Triforce, on the other hand, gives you health, gives you AD, gives you attack speed, which is, of course, going to help you out with those basic attacks, and, of course, even more ability haste, movement speed, and the Spellblade passive. So, the important part about the Spellblade passive is, of course, the fact that, you know, when you spam your W in between when you cast your uh, auto attacks, you're going to be dealing bonus damage, and this combined with, like, Kraken Slayer and Mana Mune's increased damage on your auto attacks and your abilities is going to be doing a lot of damage. And, of course, you also get the Rage Passive for better kiting, which is, of course, really useful for Ash in combination with her slows. So next up, you go for Boots. Now for Boots, honestly, you have quite a number of options. You could go, uh, of course, for one of the defensive options, of course. You could also go for Lucidity Boots because Ash, of course, with more cooldown can spam your W even more. Or you could even go for Gluttonous Greaves uh, if, you, if you so choose. But, of course, with the next item, we do have Layer of the Room King. So you do get 10% physical vamp off of here, more attack speed, as well as a little bit of attack damage. But, of course, you get the on-hit uh, current health uh, damage as well as of course the drain passive. Now next up, the last two items are a little bit more flexible. In fact, even Bork is somewhat flexible. I'm gonna talk about the alternative items later on. Second last item, we go for more reminder, a lot of healing in the current meta. So with the armor penetration as well as the grievous wounds. And finally GA, of course, you get the AD, you get the armor, and you of course get that revive. So uh, what alternative uh, options do you have? Now, firstly, I tested Essence Reaver. Now, I think Essence Reaver uh, is not really that good. And the reason being is that you 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 do get increased 22.5% damage from Essence Reaver, but in fact, your W doesn't really do all that much damage. I think your W is more so for the slow, and with this on-hit build, your main damage comes from auto attack, so it doesn't really make too much sense to build Essence Reaver in this particular build. So, tested it out, it doesn't work very well. However, uh, two items I do think that work very, very well is Solari Charge Blade and uh, Wit's End. So now, why does Charge Blade work? Well, of course you get the stats you, you love, which is of course Ability Haste as well as Attack Speed. Now, Crit is just a nice bonus, but this is your only Crit item, so you might Crit you know, 25% of the time if you get lucky. Um, that's not the important part. The important part is the Sunburst passive, which obviously whenever you cast skills, you get a, a stack and you can do on-hit magic damage, which is going to be really, really useful. Uh, of course, with this on-hit build, when you get the on-hit from Bork, on-hit, of course, from the Sheen, and also from the Mana Mune. Now, you can put this in, of course, uh, after Bork, or even as a last item. Even you could replace Bork with Starry Charge Bleed if you so choose. And then you, of course, have Wit's End, which gives you uh, MR as well as Attack Speed. And, of course, you get the on-hit healing when you're below half health. Now, this is only really useful against teams with heavy heavy um, AP. Think think like two uh, AP carries or something like that. This is where I would probably uh, replace GA with a Wits End. I would maybe even go for Wits End earlier, maybe go for something like this or something like this. Kind of depends on the situation, but for a standard default build, this is what I go for. And of course, situationally, I will toss in Charge Blade if I'm really fed, for example, or I might, uh, of course, toss in the Wits End against a heavy AP team. 
So for the runes, I like going for, of course, Kraken Slayer. Of course, we get even more uh, unhit from Kraken Slayer. Now, it's, of course, the does scale with your bonus AD, and you do get a decent amount of bonus AD, not like uh, massive amounts as like a crit build, but decent amount. Of course, you get a little bit from Mana Immune, you get a little bit from Triforce, a little bit from Bork. Like, it's not that good. Like, Conqueror might be a better option here, but I've always loved playing Ash with Kraken Slayer just because of the attack speed that she gets from her Q. I think we can proc Kraken Slayer really quickly. Uh, weakness, of course, for the extra 5% damage, basically permanently because Ash slows on her auto attacks and abilities. Bone plating, of course, for the for the um, anti burst or perseverance if you need it. And <coughs> of course, here I like to go for transcendence, which of course gives me more ability haste as well as net 15% uh, ability cooldown reduction in the later stages of the game. For the spells. I like to go for Ghost as well as Flash. Of course, Ghost is really useful for Ash in terms of just running away, kiting, or like, you know, running enemies down in combination with your slow. But if you really need it, you can, of course, go for Exhaust. So with all that out of the way, let's jump straight into talking about the gameplay. Okay, so now taking a look at the gameplay itself. Now, we all know that like Ash isn't really the best ADC in terms of dealing damage, which of course makes sense because she has a lot of utility, of course with her slows, with her vision, and with her global alt to set up plays, etc. So of course, that does make sense that she has to be a bit balanced, she can't be doing that much damage, it wouldn't really make sense. Uh, and as such, I don't really think there is like a best case situation to, to pick Ash. I think probably if there were to be a best case situation, it would be if you have like a front line and if the enemy team is very kiteable. But as you can see in this particular uh, matchup, this isn't really the case. I don't really have a front line. We have a triple ADC team comp. We only have Jack for front line. And the enemy team is not exactly very kiteable. We have, of course, like a Lee Sin uh, has dashes, Samira has dashes, uh, Zed has dashes. Pr pretty much only Set can really be kited. So. Uh, pretty much, uh, the main time I personally like to pick Ash is when my team has a lot of damage already and you don't need me for the damage. So, as you guys can see in this game, we have a, a Jax who's like sort of like a melee carry in the top lane. We have a Tristana in the jungle which of course is an, is an ADC. And we also have Corky who's, you know, and yet another carry. So basically, uh, long story short is I like to pick Ash, you know, when I have a lot of carries on my team already. Like think like for example, like a Master Yi in the jungle, like I don't know, a, 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 a Lucian mid lane or, or whatnot, that that kind of thing. So in this situation, you know, I'm just gonna go for Ash to give my team more utility and of course um, this somewhat relies on your team trying to carry you, but uh, I think Ash still does really good amounts of I'm not really good amounts of damage, but if you're good on Ash, you can still do decent damage on her and you know you have all that utility uh, for hopefully your team to take advantage of. So here let's now start talking a little bit about the gameplay. Here you can see we've gotten ganked by the Lee Sin, but you know, we can see using those slows, we end up doing a lot of actual damage to him. He was he was like at full health and now he's below half. Now here obviously Karma and uh, Samira are of course trying to take advantage, but uh, they can't really do that. Uh, Samira is also a really, really bad matchup into Ash due to how long range Ash is and how short range Samira is. Ash can sort of try to bully her in lane. Now, this is not really the case in this particular match because they do have a Karma, so I can't really step up to bully Ash because I'm gonna be eating Karma Qs and uh, Karma Ws as well if I keep stepping up to poke at uh, the uh, sorry, not Ash, but the uh, Samira. So it's not really that uh, apparent in this game, but in a game where, for example, they have like a, a engager support, and as long as you don't get engaged upon, you can completely bully the Samira out of lane. Uh, but in this matchup, not so much because of the fact that Karma has very, very strong lane presence. But either way, um, you know, playing Ash is not really very stressful for me because mainly I feel that when you play Ash, you're playing a sort of utility role, and you're not really too stressed about carrying the game. Of course. In solo queue, you can never really rely on your teammates to carry the game. As I mentioned, that Tristana hops between towers and just ends up dying uh, to the uh, Karma right there. Uh, but yeah, so basically all I'm trying to do is farm up, you know, use my utility and basically just try to help my team more, more so with utility than damage. Now, kind of semi-spoiler here, but in the end, I do end up doing the most damage on my team. Uh, somehow, which shouldn't really be the case. Like, if your team is playing well, Ash should never be doing the most amount of damage in your team, especially when you have carries on the team. Here, um, I'm basically just ulting Samira to just chunk her out a little bit. Obviously, we're not gonna kill her in the tower, but you know, I'm trying to get you know lane control because here you can see the minions are kind of stuck outside the enemy tower, so I'm trying to force the tower, the, the minions into the tower. So I'm kind of 
ulting her to kind of like scare her off and like do damage and she's gonna back off and that allows me the opportunity to actually uh, push in the minions and now the wave state has reset to a neutral wave uh, in the middle and in fact it's actually pushing towards me now which is of course very advantageous because I don't really want the wave pushed up because I don't want to get ganked by Lee Sin and of course uh, he has shown that he kind of likes to actually gank us. Here you can also see Zed is now down on the roam, and Corky didn't really even ping that he's missing, so here you can see Zed is over there in our tribush. Of course, we have it control ordered, so we know that he's there. And here, of course, we're being very cautious. Really beautiful bubble by Nami. I ult the Karma instead of the Zed because I don't feel like ulting Zed is really uh, gonna achieve anything. Because if I launch ult at him, he probably is gonna either shadow away or ulti, so I'm probably gonna miss it anyways. Whereas if I ulti onto the Karma, I prevent her from using her Q on me for the slow. I prevent her from putting the W onto me, the enhanced one, which is gonna root me and Nami and allow Zed to follow up. So sometimes it's also really important to sort of choose the correct person to ult here. If I ulted the Zed there, I might actually have been in trouble if he avoids it with his, with his own ulti. And I get, you know, W and Q'd by the Karma and then I would be in deep trouble and probably just die on the tower. But because I ulti the Karma, prevents her from following, uh, not really even following up, but prevents her from really doing anything uh, to to me to set up Zed for a kill under the tower. So um, that was how we chose to use our ultimate there and the thought process behind it. But anyways, here you can see that first dragon has of course spawned. Uh, but every all the action is kind of happening at the top lane. Here you can see that dragon has already been taken by the enemy team. Not a lot that me and Corky can do uh, over here, which is kind of sad. Corky does have the package available, and you know there was of course a play to be made there. But you know our jungle is of course did of course die in the top lane. Uh, but she did get the first tower in top, so it's not really a complete um, you know complete waste. Um, so we, we did get the first tower in the top lane, and here, you know, in my downtime, I'm just going to farm up the jungle just a little bit. Both objectives uh, not has not been taken yet. The dragon is, of course, uh, gone, but Herald is, of course, now being contested. Here I tried to launch an arrow from downtown to help. I was actually aiming for the Lee Sin, but Karma happened to step in the way, and ended up body blocking that, that arrow. So unfortunately, uh, we only hit the Karma, and my team is now uh, in a fight. I think they are 4v5 at the moment. Uh, so here what I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of the opportunity here to get a couple of plates. Here you can see Zed, is, uh, not Zed, Set is actually coming for me. And here uh, I'm trying to kite him out. Here you can see I dodge the face breaker. And here I pop the ghost and I'm trying to actually kite him out. So here you can see I'm still at full health and I've managed to actually get him down to half. He ends up ulting me back and uh, hitting the face breaker. I flash away. Here I'm waiting for my ult which is just gonna come off cooldown. Here I ult him in the face and I try to kill him here. But ridiculous <laughs> damage by the set there. I was at half HP and one W, one Haymaker, uh, not even in the center for the true damage. And plus one auto with the grass proc just instantly killed me. And I was really, really sad about this one. I felt that I played that really, really well in a sense that for the entire first half of the fight, he couldn't even reach me to do any damage. Uh, only towards the second part, he hit his uh, W on the corner and of course managed to pull me in with that face breaker and then ulted me back to a poor position. And even still, I was trying to kite him out, trying to kite back to my tower, and I kind of nearly got the kill on him, but that shield from the Haymaker and combined with the Haymaker damage and the grass prop meant that I died there. So basically, long story short is it's a really, really sad situation. But anyways, you know, we move on. We're going to use the Hawkshot to actually check uh, you know, if anyone's in the jungle. Actually, now, after we've launched it, we can see Lee Sin is top together with the set and Zed is mid. So here we know we're caught, not caught, but we're stuck in a situation where we're only against the enemy bot lane. Here you can see we end up trading one for one, basically Samira and Corky end up trading one for one, which is completely not ideal considering we're committing to a 4v2 where we should be getting like two kills for free, but uh, we end up trading one for one, which is really a horrific situation. In the meanwhile, the enemy team is pushing the other side of the map. Uh, nothing much we can really do about that situation. Uh, Jax is of course trying to handle um, the push, but there, you know, he's not. There's not too much he can do against multiple enemies as well. So here, set transitioning to pushing mid. We're going to actually back and, you know, of course reset and try to help our team to defend the other lanes, which clearly clearly are the lanes that are in trouble. Here, the fight is already ongoing. I'm going to launch my arrow from downtown to try to help, but I hit the arrow onto the set to guarantee the kill onto him. Now arguably I could have gone for the Karma instead because Set probably was going to die anyways. But uh, firstly Set was in front of Karma and secondly you know we just wanted to guarantee the kill onto the Set. 
So here we're gonna once again use the hawkshot to check. We can only see Karma and Samira in the area. Here we finally find out Lee Sin is actually there. So I try to use my W to, to check where he's in the bush. He's actually at the tower. So here we're gonna hit over and try to defend this tower against the Samira and the Lee Sin. Um, not really the best situation. All of our team is on vision. So here we might get dived. And as I mentioned that, Karma kind of pops out the side and tr uh, is interested in the dive. Here they're trying to force down the tower. I'm trying to use my W to clear out the minions, but the tower ends up falling down. I flash out of the Karma out uh, and delay enough time for my team to rotate and we end up picking up all three kills onto the overextended enemy team. Beautiful package from the Corky to spread out uh, the enemy team here and you know we followed up and picked up a quick double kill. So now on Ash, we're 3, 1, and 3. Um, doing pretty decent, honestly. Of course, we still have less gold than Tristana and about the same as Corky, which should be the case. Uh, Ash shouldn't really have that much gold because, as I said, she's more of utility and less of a carry. But of course, with this uh, carry-orientated build, I'm not building like Black Cleaver or something like that. I'm not building Ash support. I'm still building damage on Ash. So I still should be doing decent amounts of damage, but I shouldn't be doing as much damage as the other carries on my team, obviously because their kit has more damage than mine. Here Lee Sin actually ends up whiffing the the uh, Q and ends up hitting a minion instead, which the minion ended up dying, so he couldn't actually uh, engage onto us. If not me and Corky could have been in trouble. Here, round 2 of me kiting the set. Um, this time a little bit more successful, I don't really get uh, damaged by him, but I do take uh, Karma Q as well as some uh, Z damage to the face here. Again, I'm trying to finish off the kill onto the set, but it's not happening. Uh, we end up basically just kiting back, we get pulled back by the Karma ulti. Karma ends up dying to uh, the Tristana, and Tristana is of course getting really fed. She has two items at the moment, four, two, and four. You know she is really, really fed with the most gold. Here, Lee Sin ends up jumping onto me, and unfortunately, uh, I do end up dying. I thought that me and Nami probably could have killed the Lee Sin together, but unfortunately, Lee Sin just had a little bit too much damage due to the fact that I was a little bit too low on health. Of course, Lee Sin's Q does do uh, missing health damage, and because I was pretty low, uh, Lee Sin ends up killing me. Nami, Nami W didn't come in fast enough and I wasn't uh, able to survive there. But either way, Tristana ends up cleaning up both kills on Lee Sin and Samira and then ends up taking up dra taking the dragon. So basically it ends up being a pretty good situation all things considered. Of course just that I ended up dying which was not really ideal. Now we have our mana mute evolved into the mirror mana and of course this um, mirror mana with Triforce power spike is going to be really really strong here. So of course uh, with the Mana Moon, we're, we're gonna get a little bit more poke damage on our W, but more so than that, we're gonna get, of course, the damage onto our auto attacks, and of course, combined with the Sheen passive and the attack speed from Triforce, uh, this is, of course, gonna be a uh, you know, decent chunk of damage to the enemy team. Alright, so here, Corky is trying to set a, a random trap there, even though we can see two people in the top lane, and Samira is somewhere in the jungle. Uh, Karma is down mid lane, so no one's gonna walk into the trap. I say that, but Karma walks straight into the trap. I fall out with the arrow to ensure we can pick up the kill. And now a full on fight's coming. The whole enemy team is rotating. Tristana's coming over as well. We end up basically in a 4v4 here, fighting pretty much over nothing. And But, anyways, Tristana picks up a double, and we end up basically winning the fight. No objectives are even up at this point, so basically off of that fight, the, the most we can get is this uh, tier 2 and tier 3 tower if, you know, things go well. Tristana goes super, super aggressive and tries to actually go over the Z between towers and without Nami there to tank two tower shots, uh, she would have died, but thankfully Nami did tank the tower shots and she does survive. With Tristana's bomb, we can easily take two towers. And now the enemy team are down to inhibitors, which ends up being a beautiful, beautiful situation because uh, Jax, of course, is an insane um, split pusher and he has a two item power spike at the moment even though he's not doing the best uh, in terms of KDA. His goal is basically the same as mine so he's you know in pretty good shape. Now of course we're going to start building towards our blade of the uh, rune king. No reason for something like a wit's end only karma has magic damage and she is building support with that uh, imperial mandate. Doesn't even have ludens or anything like that. So here we're trying to catch the mid wave but we're being a little bit cautious because we can't get engaged on by Lee Sin. Of course Lee Sin you know, loves to engage on AD carries, and he has three AD carry targets here to engage on. Um, the Tristana takes a very greedy back and ends up getting caught by the Samira. I end up stealing a little bit of Lee Sin's uh, Raptors, and here we're trying to rotate and see if we can find a good fight here. Lee Sin hits the Q on Corky. I'm ready, I'm ready with my arrow in case he jumps in. He does not actually end up jumping in. But instead, here he actually ends up. Um, getting caught by Nami's bubble. So here I follow up with the ulti for a super long stun into the Nami wave 
and we nearly kill him. Samira tries to go in and compensate, but we kill Samira instead. Trading one for one. Here, flash forward for the slow onto the Lee Sin. We pick up the kill on Lee Sin, and we're going onto the Karma. Zed tries to come in, but we have the stasis now, so we pop the stasis to um, block Zed's damage. And here, with the heals from Nami and with the slows, we can finish off a triple kill um, onto the Karma. Of course, timer you know was a little bit slow, so we didn't actually show up as a triple kill. And at this point, the enemy team has had enough. They have surrendered and I'm gonna leave you guys with the stats as usual so hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned from this video and goodbye